For those of us who like to fish for fun, there are few things more gratifying than cooking up your own catch. And in a typical year in the U.S., those recreational fishermen will collectively bring in about 350 million pounds of fish. But those are rookie numbers. To keep up with the pros on the commercial level, every angler in the nation would need to up their annual catch by about 25-fold. Who's got time for that? Well, the folks on America's Finest do. But while they steam across the Bering Sea in search of more fish, oh yeah, deck boss Ali Apelu is learning why they haven't been filling the net. That's a big hole. Deck the bridge. I got you. Go ahead. Okay, Captain. We found a problem. There's a big hole on the uh, body of the net. Good 10 feet of hole. So we're gonna go ahead and fix it right now. Okay, sounds good. Well, I'm glad you found something there that's causing our problem. So, all right, get her fixed. Let me know if you find anything else. Copy that. Fortunately, any fisherman worth his salt knows their way around a little net mending. And with the next tow, just 30 minutes away, there should be just enough time to get this trawling net back in the game. But they'll have to divide and conquer. Uh, you sew from this side, uh, and I'll sew from that side. And then we're gonna, we should meet up in the middle. Every time you sew, you, we gotta make sure it's the right size mesh. Mesh gotta be even with the uh, original mesh. All right, you good? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Right now, we just got done. Go through the whole net. We're gonna pull it forward, stack this up, get it ready for, for the next haul. While Ali and the deckhands prepare the mended net for launch, further up, Chief Engineer Steve Sauer is taking the opportunity to see if a winch that's been giving them issues lately has taken to his latest attempted at fix. We've got a communication issue with the encoder on the spooling gear for the port trawl winch here. All right, come outboard just a little bit. We changed the ethernet port to where the communication is coming from, but we're just gonna wait for him to set back out so we can watch it and make sure everything's good. All right, go ahead and try and wind it up. And then, uh, you know, never ending game of keeping the boat rolling. Okay, so it's good to go? Yeah, it looks like it. But while wrapping up the encoder issue, I'm gonna close up the encoder. Steve spots an even bigger problem. Oh, well that's swell. What is that? The cotter pin for this end of the brake band is gone and the washer fell off, the, the pin's walking out. We don't want it to walk out and lose a brake band. That would be bad. By bad, Steve means that they'd lose the ability to stop the winch, which would simply unspool until it ran out of cable. So Steve will have to do what he does best, fix it on the fly. A little bit of a tricky spot. I guess it's a good thing that other thing happened. Because then I got down there and saw the other thing. All right, we're good. We got the washer back on. We got the pin moved over far enough to get a cotter pin in it. And uh, so now it's secure again. All right, that's the uh, fun and challenging part about the job is having to do stuff on the fly, keep the boat fishing, because if we don't have gear in the water, we're not making money. So, but we're all good now. Below deck in the processing department, freezer technician Luis Sanchez is preparing for what will hopefully be the boat's next big score. I'm going to defrost this uh, freezer. And that means conducting some critical maintenance. Every 24 hours, we defrost the freezers in order to keep them running. They just get frosted up, and then they stop working. So I'm turning on the hot gas. In a few minutes, we're going to see this uh, freezer defrosted. That's it. 
If little precautions like these aren't taken on a regular basis, it could cause a domino effect that would bring the whole assembly line to a halt. But not on Luis's watch. Every position here is very hard. I mean, everybody's working six hours a day. I come to the job and like, whoa, it's just, I have to do stuff that i never done in my life. There's muscles in my body that hurt that I never felt in pain, I mean, I never felt in my life. I told my wife, only five years I'm gonna do this job. But you know what? I just can't leave this place. We all treat each other like family. But like most families, even this operation can be a little dysfunctional at times. So the pads are off. Notice here they're getting stuck. Yeah, that's a bad problem there. 